Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's episode, we have removed all of the second row seats from the Defender 110. We're gonna be replacing all the squabs with brand new seats from Exmoor Trim. Now, nearly all Defenders pre-TDCI uh, had the same kind of second row seats in a 110 County uh, as these. They're three individual frames and they just got simple squabs mounted onto them. Now, ours are in really good condition. There's no rips or tears, so it's a shame that we have to change them, but we did go to the trouble of fitting some really nice Exmoor trim urban seats in the front of the Defender. So what we've opted for is the same design, so it's the fluted design of the seats to match the front seats, and we've got for a high back on the left and right with a low back in the middle and we've done that obviously so we can see through the back of the vehicle um, in the rear view mirror it just makes a bit more sense now I think these seats are going to look fantastic and there's not much to do uh, on our existing frames they are a little bit worn out they're a little bit rusty so I think we're just going to give them a blow over with some aerosol we're not going to go to town because actually they're in pretty good shape so we're just going to give them a clean give them a dusting with some aerosol get them looking fresh and then we're going to get the new squabs on so normally you just get a bit of traffic over these front bars when you're loading stuff in and getting in kicking it with your heels on your boots etc so that's really the only place you're going to need to paint i'm probably doing too much here but so i'm going to service this area a little bit the reason being is this spring is loose so what we need to do is rotate this fixing here just to put more tension on the spring i'm going to tighten this bolt up a little tiny bit here as well tell you what let's whip that off and give that a little little spray There is one little area of corrosion I want to look at on the main centre frame and that's where the back rail it used to sit on the seat pan uh, where the carpet was and it was it's damp so it's got some blistering on there so I'm going to actually buzz that back, get it down to bare metal, get some treatment on there, some primer and then I'm going to give it another coat of black. So frames all painted up, that's uh, dried off nicely so let's have a look and see what we get in this kit. So we've got our seat base look at that so if you haven't seen the video where we actually installed the urban seats with this fluted design um, they heated and everything into the defender definitely i'd recommend having a look at that up above there somewhere i'll put a link um, but that's well worth looking at and that's why we've chosen this design to complement the whole thing so there is our seat base um, and then we've got our seat back so this is an outside seat so this is a high back <clears throat> so there you have your high back seat now let me go and get a standard seat just to show you the difference so this is an old seat back just look at the difference in height so you've got loads more support so if you've got adults in the car for example uh, and even if you've got sort of car seats you're going to get loads more support from these um, so you've got loads of shoulder support you've got head restraint there which is going to help in case of an emergency stop or something so that's an, another reason to have a bit more security and it feels that feels like it's got a metal frame in it now I'm gonna have to check the specs on these because these feel so much heavier and more substantial than I'm used to. And I haven't fitted a set of these for probably about five years. So there's a good chance that Exmoor Trim have upped their game and changed the design slightly. So let me have a little look at the specs. And if there's something worth mentioning, which I'm sure there is, I'll put it on the screen now just to let you know what the construction of this is. But trust me, it is a lot heavier, a lot more substantial. It can be a little bit scary when you're fitting these new squabs and the reason is you have to cut into the material because they trim these covering those uh, plates which have got the holes in there to actually mount your screws but there is a very simple, easy, safe way of doing that uh, and I'll share that with you now and give you an idea of what's involved. So we've got our seat frame here and what we don't want is this frame to be too narrow for the seat because obviously when it's moving backwards and forwards and moving around there's a good chance that material could get snagged and torn so if your seats are a little bit squished bent twisted just make sure you put a bit of time into getting these plates straight try and deburr any edges that you might have on there get them painted get them looking nice uh, and just you don't want any sort of rough sharp edges that might snag this material when you're folding your seats forward so we get all new fixing bolts 
which we don't necessarily need, but we're definitely going to use. The nice thing about these is you get all your nylon washers. Now, if you want to do this with your seat frame still in the vehicle, that's fine. You just lay them on top and away you go. But because we've taken ours off, it's a little bit easier. We just want to flip this upside down. In we go. And just start it off by hand. So avoid using a ratchet. Just These want to just be hand tight in the rivet nuts. There we go. And the other nice thing I like about these is you get more support under your knees because these are actually a lot longer than the standard seat as well. But, you know, we've gone to the trouble of just tidying up our frames. I think that's made a big difference. Even on the front here, they look brand new virtually. And with that seat on there, wow. So we're now gonna be mounting our seat back to our frame through this hole here. Now we don't have a specific system. All we need we actually is put the locating bolt back in and we need to put our pivot bolt in with our nylon washers. So we're gonna to have to mark on the seat and actually make the hole in the material. So we're gonna put this to one side just for now. So inside your seat back, you've got this big metal frame and on the sides here, you've got these metal brackets. But within that plate, you've then got four individual holes, two of which are for mounting it onto a separate, different kind of seat base where the seat back is fixed in a reclined position. What we want to be doing is using uh, one around here for our lock locking pin. Um, we'll have a look for that in a moment. I'm not sure which side it goes on. And then we've got a pivot point here right in the front corner. So it's quite hard to feel just in the bottom corner here, right in the corner there, look, um, we've got a hole and we have to put a pick through there. Okay, so that is where our hole is. Now you've got two choices here. If you don't have what I have, which is a very big fat Phillips screwdriver head, um, you can just use a pair of nail scissors just to trim that material out and around. What I like to do is use uh, a Phillips screwdriver, depending on how big the hole is, is how big your screwdriver needs to be. And you put pressure down and just rotate this until you can hear the material tear. Lift it out and then inside you'll have your material. There, look. So that's what we've removed and you want to make sure you get that out so you can expose the thread in there. So there's our threaded piece and we'll do the same on the other side and we're ready to mount it in the frame. So this is a really good example of how you could very easily get the wrong hole because there is one here which kind of feels like it's in the same area but the one we want you can actually feel the nut underneath here where it's welded onto the plate and unfortunately the stitching is just over my hole so I'm going to have to try and work that material back over there because my hole is there look and I, I really struggle to feel that so there's my hole, really hard to get to. And I nearly put the hole there, which is in the wrong place. So I nearly did it wrong. Um, so it's easily done, which is why I wanted to show you what to do if you do it wrong. So if you make a mistake like this, which I did obviously deliberately to show you, um, you can use these fir tree clips to very nicely clean up your mess. Don't get super upset with Exmoor trim when you do it wrong. Uh, because if you've got this guide, you won't do it wrong, but you just basically want to be putting some of these fir tree clips in and then it'll look amazing. So we want to be locating our shoulder bolt now through the hole there. We're going to run these two washers, these nylon washers on the inside, and that's because they work against each other, look, for the lack of friction. So they help the seat back move. Get this offered up. Don't use tools for this because you'll cross thread um, that threaded piece inside the seat back. Lay your seat back down on top of your seat and just feel with your fingers for that to take. There we go. So we're not going to tighten this fully, we're just going to get it started so it's nicely in that thread. So you can see there we've squashed our plates in ever so slightly but the seat now works a treat. So we still have our locking stud or locking pin to fit into the seat back and that will locate in this bracket here. So when you open the seat, you can get an idea of where the hole's gonna be. It's gonna be around here somewhere. I can just feel one there. Now in the kit from Exmoor Trim, you do get a bolt that you can use as a locking pin, but we're gonna actually use one of the shoulder bolts we took off the old seat backs and a washer, which again, doesn't come in the kit. But if you put your washer over your shoulder bolt thread, once you get it in there, 
you'll see it just tidies up that whole, tidies up the material and just finishes the job really nicely. So I've actually painted the covers in black. Now these are obviously gray, a standard to match the interior plastic trim on the county, but because they're on the black seats, whereas they were gray before, I think they look nicer sprayed up. So again, I've just dusted them over with some satin black paint as I have done with the frames I should look really good so last night I actually used some Raptor uh, aerosol to spray on the bottom of this frame where I'd actually taken back all the rust and it's come up really nicely so I know now that's got a much harder wearing surface on there and again I've just dusted over it this morning with the matte black and uh, it looks really good so now we can put our seat base on and then we've got a bit of rebuilding to do on the catches on the sides and then it's pretty much getting it in the vehicle. This is our catch bolt, and that's actually a standard threaded bolt with a uh, tube spacer in there, a brass one. Uh, we've replaced our bent screw there with a nice stainless button head, and then we've got our latch on, and we've repositioned the spring so it all sits nicely now and gives us some tension. Obviously, your seat's gonna look brand new when you bought brand new squabs, but I think the thing that I really am pleased that we did was actually paint the subframes, just because it just finishes the whole job. Don't have to look at it again. It's just gonna look fantastic. So let's get these in the Defender and see how they look. So there we have it. These seats look fantastic. They've just really bought the interior up to spec. With our full carpet system, our new front seats, the now we've got the second row seats in place, she's pretty much ready to go and she's looking fine. I really like the seats, they're very comfortable. I think the thing I like the most really is the fact that we've got two high backs, which do offer so much more support and are much more comfortable to sit in. But we've also got this low back in the middle. I think as a set, that is the perfect solution but you be the judge and if you'd like something like this in your own vehicle if you just scroll down to the description I'll link all of these items in the description straight to LR parts so you can go and click and get your own so thanks for watching hope you enjoyed it and I'll catch you on the next one